So this is just a quick tutorial on building up some nice cliffs, basic rocks, that kind of thing, uh, from height maps generated from a normal map. So for this you're just going to need, uh, well I'm using Maya and a program called Gnarled, which is this here. Um, Gnarled is amazing, it generates mini maps based off of uh, well, normal height or I think it's a derivative map, not particularly sure. However, the function we're going to be using from Gnarled is height, well, normal to height. So this is basically what we're going to be, the end result will be. It, um, what we're doing is we're baking down the height map into a, a plane and then reducing the poly count of that until we get something like this, then cleaning it up, making so it tiles. So this here is, we'll be getting one of these sections. And then from that we can tile it by deformers. I'm using Maya's deformers, however you can, I guess 3ds Max probably has something similar. They're all, it's basic, um, yeah, basic non-linear non deformers. Anyway, uh, so in Nald, I'll start by opening up my normal normal map. So I think this one here. So you can see here, this is what Nald interprets the normal map to be. Here are the maps that are output. So we've got a height map, we've got the normal map, a derivative AO, convexity, concavity, and transmission. Transmission's only there if you input a diffuse map, from what I believe. I've never actually used it, however, all we're going to be using is the height. Now we can change, um, we can change some of the settings here, however, I think the See if we knock that down a bit. Uh, if we knock the slope range down, it becomes quite shallow. So we're gonna want it really deep. So we want we want this height map to be using the whole range. So I think that's good enough for what we need it for. Now, uh, under export, I won't export anything else except for, yeah, I'll only export height. Uh, we'll stick it, leave it at that. Poke it out as a PNG, 8 bit. Stick it in bacon. Right, uh, so I'll just hit export, now we we'll export the height map. Now, once we've got the height map, we'll start off with the fresh scene and create a plane. The plane has to be perfectly square, otherwise this won't work. And it has to be, you have to make sure that the UVs are 0 to 1. You can't go out any more than that, otherwise it will won't tile. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to just smooth this a bunch of times. It doesn't need to be incredibly smooth. Just need enough space for the detail to come through. Uh, and then, so triangulate it. And then in Maya, this is software dependent. Um, we're going to come down to deform. This is only for 2016. In 2015, I think it will be under the animation tab. I'm not sure, but you're going to want to go into um, texture deformer. And we'll come up with this little arrow. Here and under the attribute editor, we're going to select our texture. File, choose our file. So, leave. That's going to load the, the height map in. Now, as you can see, it's not as deep as we'd like, so I'm going to push that. We can always change this later by just scaling the mesh. However, yeah, it won't, it doesn't particularly matter right now. Anyway, that's fine. Now I'm going to delete the history so that 
now we can actually edit this mesh without the texture deformer affecting it. Right, now this is where Maya's reduce function just is fantastic. I'm going to reduce it by triangle count. I think I'll knock it down to 1500. So it may look a bit chaotic there. Drop it down a bunch more, probably. Let's try 800. So yeah, it may look quite, quite chaotic, however, we'll come down and we'll assign a new material to it. And let's drag this stuff on the screen so you can see it. We will assign that. We'll assign the actual exported texture. Now this one is very flat. Uh, that is for a reason. It's quite flat, but that yeah, that's for a reason. It's because most of the the shadowing and everything will actually be part of the mesh. We can bake vertex colors or anything else for that matter, really. Find our material, and we'll just stick in the specular map as well. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very shiny, and we don't want that, especially when working on it. No, I'm, screw it. I'm just going to use the... No, I will use specular exported. So I've got this now. If you look down here, we're going to have some stretching. That's not particularly horrible. However, it would be good to get rid of it. So just stick that there. This won't create the best results. However, it will it will make it so it's more presentable, especially up close. So we're just going to smooth those UVs out and try keep the seams where or in the corners and edges where it's most deep because otherwise it kind of rides up the side here so we're going to have to select this one Yeah, sadly, stretching is unavoidable, but you can do at least try to to get rid of it. So see here, this is it's quite messed up right there. So it's gonna that out. Now, actually, I'll just spin it up. Upright transforms. Actually, I'll turn on lighting. Oh, no. Throw in a light. So, throw in an ambient light. I will turn down the ambient slightly so that we have more of an idea about it. Alright, there we go. So you can see that there are definitely some issues. Now you can also go through and clean up the mesh by welding the vertices. That one there. Just move the camera around, find things that are kind of close together and don't really add to the overall form of that there. It's quite nasty at this point here. So, also in Maya, the good thing is uh, when you're merging vertices, it won't really affect the the UV map much. So you can merge them, and the UV map will just kind of move itself. Won't be much in the way of kind of stretching. Alright, 
So I mean, I'll, I'll call that done for now. It could do with a whole bunch more work, just kind of reducing the poly count, because currently it's at 781, and if you want to make this cliff like enormous, you probably want to knock it up to around, or knock it down to around 500 per piece. I'll also stick a directional light with shadows. Delete that light. Does add to it. So now you're also going to want to make it so there's tiles. So to do that, I'd just to make it easier on yourself, just combine it and then just merge most of these to center. We'll get some seams. So actually, I'll just undo that. See here. Technically, that they're all tiled together. So what we could do instead is cut through like that, and then delete these ends here. So delete these ones. Now that uh, the texture tiles and it, it meets in the center, yeah. and this looks like it might be a bit of a problem area. Like that, close the center. Yeah, basically the cycle just repeat it a lot. Eventually you'll get to the point where it will tile quite nicely and you'll have this entire seam here merged together. Once that is done, you're gonna want to um wanna actually you just to duplicate this mesh, slide it along so that it meets itself. So like that, then you want to delete everything down that edge. All of this, except very side faces. Coming into this mesh, want to do the same, so delete those. Then that and that should match up. You want to combine them, then merge them. So then now when you shift this across to the left or the right, it will also delete these faces. So then when you duplicate it to the left and right, it meets up. See down here. So however, we that quite, it was quite rushed, so it doesn't actually work. Uh, you're going to want to do the same for the top and bottom as well. Snap that to the top, merge them, duplicate it, or duplicate the merge, flip it to the bottom, and then attach that bottom edge to the main one. And then once that got your nice tiling mesh, which you can then, what I've done here is I've actually just duplicated it, snap times, snap them together, merged, so then under deformers we can go nonlinear and bend, uh, we can then rotate the bend modifier so that it's flat, also so that it bends along the right axis. It will just change the curvature. As you can see there it's bending, so if we bend it at 180 degrees, it will meet down the back here. So we'll actually tile. So we'll delete the history on this. Then 
merged that mesh so that all the points down here are merged and soften slash harden the edges soften the entire thing got a it's round pillar so you can then come in with soft select or something else to kind of add a bit of variation to the mesh Got kind of a, a nice looking tiling rock mesh. I whipped up this 